Hello and welcome to the Lesotho if you are new. My name is Istana. Today's video is all about Istanbul, the largest city of Turkey. This amazing historical city connecting Europe and Asia has plenty of things to see and do when visiting it. I have visited Istanbul before, so I would like to share the top sites that in my opinion are the best to see there. Let's start with the obvious and the absolute must-see in Istanbul. It is the Hagia Sophia. The Byzantine architectural wonder stands strong since the 6th century. First built as a cathedral, it was later converted into a mosque, but still plenty of Christian decor is visible on its walls. This makes an eerie experience when exploring it. The history speaks for itself there. But no video will be able to portray the massive scale of a building and while visiting it, I kept thinking how this was even possible to construct 1,500 years ago. It is so big that it held the title of the largest cathedral in the world for almost a thousand years. Today it is a part of UNESCO Heritage List together with plenty of other buildings mentioned in this list and for many years Hagia Sophia was functioning as a museum. But as of 2020 it was converted back into a mosque, so the visiting rules have changed a bit since then. The second must-see place in Istanbul is the Topkapi Palace, built just behind the Hagia Sophia. This is where the Sultan used to live. Visiting the palace gives a very good insight of how grand the Ottoman Empire was. Built in 15th century, the palace served both as the main residence of the sultans as well as the administrative headquarters until the 19th century. The palace also has the famous harem, where all the female members of sultan's family lived. Both the harem and the other buildings are filled with intricate golden decor elements, marble, painted tiles and window shutters with seashells, creating lavish interiors. There also are plenty of other exhibition rooms where you can see plenty of historical weapons, household items and even the imperial treasury. Topkapi Palace also has expansive gardens and as it is all built atop the hill, it also provides wide views of the Bosphorus Strait. To see all the exhibitions and the gardens in the Topkapi Palace, you could easily spend at least half of a day. If you would like to see a more modern Ottoman Imperium Palace, then the next stop is the Dolmabahce Palace, right on the shore of the Bosphorus. Built further from the old town in 1856, it served as the new Sultan's Palace and the administrative center. I guess the Sultans got tired a bit of the old-fashioned Topkapi Palace. Instead, Dolmabahce Palace is much more European looking, with Baroque, Rococo, neoclassical style mix and a few Ottoman elements in it. Dolmabahce Palace is the largest palace in Turkey, with a size of 45,000 square meters, and it's filled with luxury to the brim. Its surrounding garden, while small, is very beautiful and unique with the Bosphorus Strait as its backdrop. In between of the Dolmabahce Palace and the Old Town, there is the heart of Istanbul's culture, the Yolda district. From the center of the modern Istanbul, Taksim Square on top of the hill, to the hip cafes in Karakoy by the Bosphorus, and to the newer old town in Galata, and its most famous spot, the Galata Tower. Standing on top of a steep hill, it's no easy feat to actually reach it by foot, but the tower, one of the main symbols of Istanbul, is worth it. Galata Watchtower has been protecting the city since 1348, and for a very long time it was the tallest building in Istanbul, at the height of almost 67 meters. Today it's a museum and a perfect spot to have a 360 degree view of the city. Now let's go back across the bridge to the oldest part of the city in the Fatih neighborhood. There still are many more places to mention. And the heart of the old town is the Sultan Ahmed Square, which back in the days of the Roman Empire was the Hippodrome of Constantinople, where the famous chariot races were held. It was the center of the city's social life. The Emperor Theodosius even brought an ancient Egyptian obelisk in year 390 from the Temple of Karnak in Luxor. Today the obelisk is around 3,500 years old. Right in front of it there is the Museum of Turkish and Islamic Arts inside the 16th century Imperial Court Palace. Beside the architecture, the museum has an extensive collection from the fancy-looking scripts to carpets and Ottoman furniture. 
on the other side of the Sultanak Met Square, there is another pretty sight to see, and the one that actually gave a name to the square. It is the Sultanak Met Mosque, or more known to visitors as the Blue Mosque. It was constructed in the beginning of the 17th century, and it's famous for its walls, which are decorated with around 20,000 hand-painted blue tiles. Just as the Hagia Sophia a few hundred meters away, the Blue Mosque is also a part of UNESCO Heritage List. While it is not a world wonder as Hagia Sophia, which was built a thousand years before this one, the Blue Mosque is almost as big and impressive on its own. It is fascinating how people, not just in Turkey but all around the world, put so much exertion, sometimes pushing the limits of their capabilities, to build most spectacular structures for religion. Anyway, back to Istanbul. There is one more interesting place near the Sultan Ahmed Square, this time underground. It is the Basilica Cistern. Constructed in the 6th century, it was essential to the old city. It was the main water supply to the buildings on the hill, including all the palaces. The place is huge, with the capability to hold 80,000 cubic meters of water. The ceiling is supported by 336 columns, each 9 meters high, and some of them decorated with medusa heads. It was constantly used until the modern days. Today the water is kept at the minimum in order for it to be accessible indoors. Basilica Cistern has been filmed in famous movie scenes, like the James Bond from Russia with Love and Inferno, the sequel of the Da Vinci Code. At the moment, however, the cistern is under ongoing restoration work and is not accessible. Its reopening date is not known yet, but hopefully it will reopen this year. One last spot in the old town not to miss to visit is the Grand Bazaar, one of the largest covered markets in the world. It was built in the 15th century and expanded many times later on. With Istanbul being such a perfect strategic location, this market was the hub of all the trade in the Mediterranean, connecting with Asia and Africa. Even today, the market is thriving ever more, with a few hundred thousand visitors every day, although probably the numbers have changed since the pandemic. Anyway, you can buy almost anything here, from spices to carpets and jewelry. Just be ready to haggle. However, to be fair, I have not visited the Grand Bazaar myself, because I've been many times to the famous Khan al Khalili market in Cairo and other markets in Egypt which sell kind of similar goods because Egypt was part of the Ottoman Empire as well. But if this experience would be new to you, then the Grand Bazaar is definitely a place not to miss. The next place to see is kind of unavoidable in Istanbul. It is the Strait of Bosphorus itself. You'd be getting glimpses of it from many places around the city, with massive container ships passing by and local ferries scurrying between Europe and Asia. Istanbul is unimaginable without it. So having a boat ride through it is also a great experience to see the city from the water side. There are plenty of touristic boats that pass by famous places, but taking a ferry to Asian side is just as fun but way cheaper. Plus, if you take a ferry from the Galata Bridge area, you'll pass by a peculiar place, Maiden's Tower. It's taking over all the space of the tiny island just off the city's Asian side. This cool-looking tower also attracted many movie makers to film there, including another James Bond movie, The World Is Not Enough. Today the tower has a restaurant inside, an interesting place to enjoy the views of the Bosphorus. And the last but not least place to visit in Istanbul is also across the strait on the Asian side, giving another reason to cross when just traveling between continents. It is the Çamlıca Hill Park. If you would like to have a picnic in Istanbul, this is probably the best spot for that. At 288 meters high, it is the highest point of the city and it shows you that. Çamlıca Hill provides the beautiful wide views of the city. You can see almost everything there. The Bosphorus Bridge, Business District, the Old Town and more. But if you are not up for going uphill, you can still have a good time on the Asian side. It is great to have a walk on the pedestrian path by the water, with plenty of cafes and street food stands. You can feel a bit more local and laid-back atmosphere there, compared with a very touristic old town. Now that you have watched all my top sites in Istanbul, here's a little bonus. The Turkish cuisine. Now, that is definitely not a mess, even if they do have the usual food chains from abroad as well. Turkish food can even be the main reason to visit the country. There's so much to try here. Probably the most famous are the shawarma and grilled meat dishes. 
but there also are plenty of other things to try. For example, I didn't even know this pastry before going to Istanbul called simit, but it is such an amazing snack and you can see that everyone loves it there. You can find a seller on almost every corner. There also is iron, a type of drinking yogurt that locals pair with grilled meat. And for the sweet tooth, all types of baklava are a must try together with black tea. And of course letting yourself to get tricked by ice cream vendor. Something more specific for Istanbul would be the seafood, since it's a coastal city. Locals swear by mussels, there are plenty of places selling them. Istanbul is a very flavorful city, both in food and sightseeing options. There are plenty more sites that I didn't mention in this video, but it all depends how much time you get to visit it. I would recommend at least 3 days, depending how fast your pacing is. With kids that definitely takes more time, since playgrounds and parks are a must too. We stayed there 4 days with a toddler and wished there was more time. Going around town is very easy as the tram is very well developed. You don't have to even stay in the heart of old town. I found Karakoy district particularly interesting to stay in. So that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what would you like to visit in Istanbul the most. And thanks for watching.